Hey guys, how are you? Today I want to show you a tutorial on how to make a form with Mobex. And there's a little surprise at the end. I'm going to show you a much simpler way to make the code that we're going to do in first place. And if you want to see the last part, you can skip to minute. Good. Starting with the project here, let me give you a few caveats. We're using Mobex, as I said, so our dependencies are Flutter Mobex, Mobex, Mobex Code Gen, and there's also Build Runner to be able to make the Mobex generated classes. Good! Also, I'm using the MVVM architecture here, in which we have a page and we have the view model. It won't have the actual model layer, because we're going to simplify it just because of the actual code that we want to show in the video. One more thing, this code is all open source, so if you want to get it and follow the tutorial with me, be my guest. The link is below in the description. Good, I'll start here. This page is exactly what you are already seeing here in the simulator, and this page is already completely filled in. It is not linked to the view model. The view model here is completely empty. There is only one instance of it being created here, and we will implement everything from scratch. So, what do we want to do? This email field with a field to accept the terms and conditions and show the result down here in a reactive way. And we have a button that will be disabled when the form is invalid. So, let's go. If we want to make a form, we need to save the values that the user enters in that form. Let's start with an email observable. So, string email takes an empty string. And we also need one more variable for each field, which is the error variable, which will indicate whether or not there is an error in that field. Let's go. Observable, one more. And in this case, we're going to make him nullable so that we can set this error to null if there is no error. This will be important so that when we display it in the UI, the red border does not appear in our field. Perfect, it's being initialized with null. And we need to ensure that these variables are being updated. So whenever the user types, we'll update here with the right email. So here we can use an action function, it will be a function to update the value of email error, which will be void on email changed. Then when the email is changed, it will receive a string with a new value. With this, we can make the email equal to the new value sent by the page. It's very simple to make this connection. We just call this function. We replace this function that is being passed here by our view, mo view model. View model dot on email changed. Perfect. If we just do this from here, it's already working. Obviously, it's not working right away because we didn't run the build runner. So for that, I'm going to leave the build runner running here with watch so that all changes I make to the view model will automatically generate a new class generated from the view model, this .g.dort. So I think it's already run here. Let's try to run it just to see if it's updating this value. If we type something and hits the breakpoint, everything is fine. Perfect. Good. So from that moment on, we can start validating our field. Here, I'm just going to do it before proceeding. Just a heads up. I'm simply finding it a bit here. I'm just checking if the email is filled in or not to simplify the tutorial. But if you want to do more complex validation in your project, feel free. So what am I going to do here? If the email is empty, then what I'm going to do is email error will receive a message. In this case, this field is required. This will be the message that will appear in our UI. Otherwise, we have to remember to set the email error to null. So we, remo so we remove the error from the interface. All right, we already put our error variable here. We just need to update it here in our text field. So 
what we're gonna do is associate it like this view model that email error okay here we already saved it if i delete this field just let me remove the breakpoints so the error is already appearing here as expected let's do the same now with our terms and conditions field so to do this we're going to follow the same path we're going to use two variables that will allow us to have the same behavior except that in this case the first one will be a boolean which will be called accepted terms initialize with false because the field will initialize without being filled in and we have another error called accepted terms error which will work in the same way as the email let's paste this here to make the tutorial a little faster so on terms changed I'm gonna leave the new value here as nullable I'll explain the reason but for now you can leave it that way and here it will be accepted terms receives new value so if it's null, obviously this guy here can't be null. But if by chance the UI says it's null, we can accept that the value is false. Then we'll know that the field wasn't checked. In the same way here, if accepted terms is empty, or if it's false, which means it was not accepted, we will update accepted terms error both here and here and we'll leave the same message this field is required otherwise it leaves null with no error perfect if we save will work no because we haven't connected with our checkbox yet to do this i'm going to replace this to do with our view model dot accepted terms this will make an update at the right time Remember I said that this part here was a boolean nullable? So, it was because this checkbox is unchanged function. If you look at this signature up here, it expects a function that returns a boolean that is nullable. So, for that, I made the function that way. So here we just call viewmodel.onTermsChanged. Good. And to show the error, we've already left a prepared piece of code that we can only verify here in our view model. So, if view model that accepted terms error is different from null, then if the error is not null, then we will show the error message and we will put it here. View model that accepted terms error. And here. As this observable that we created here is nullable, we can, in this specific place, assume that it is not, because here we have already verified that it is different from null. If we run and click here and uncheck it, this field is already appearing as required, okay? Next step, what's missing? Mark this submit button as disabled if the form is invalid. With that, guess what? We need one more variable. So here I'm gonna create a computed variable, which will be based on the email and accepted terms values. Therefore, this computed will be a boolean that will return if the form is valid. I'm gonna make a getter is form valid, which will return the following. Email that is not empty, so the form is valid if the email is not empty and if you have accepted the terms nice and for that we need to update our button if you don't know yet if you send a null value or don't send a value in the on press parameter what will happen is that this button will be disabled
So if I save in here, did you see how the button was disabled? It turned gray. So what does that mean? That we can make our view model use this is form valid and send either a function or a null. That way we can do is form valid. If yes, we will call a function. Else, it is null. So here we can already see that it is already working. So if we make the form valid, it is already enabled. Otherwise, it is already disabled. Good. Now there's this little section here. It shouldn't be shown all the time. It should only appear from the moment that the form was actually submitted. To do this, we can make another variable here. I'm going to do it down here. I'm going to use always notify. It's from a recent Mobax API, but it guarantees that even if the value is the same, it will notify whatever is watching it. And this variable will be called show success info. which will be also be initialized to false because we assume that right away the form is invalid. Okay, let's make a connection here with our page. Make sure that this block is only being shown in this case. So view model dot show success info. So if show success info is true, it will display that block of code. Otherwise, it won't appear. And then we need to update this variable. When will it be updated? When the form is submitted. So let's create a function to do that. So we can create a function called submit form, which takes no parameters. And then what it will do is, first of all, before submitting the form, you have to know if it is valid. So is form valid. If so, what we're going to do show success info true. Here in a real case, you could make an API call, you could save locally, you could make the user go to the next screen, or things like that. I saved it. If you notice, it's gone. And if we, for example, check here and submit the form, it's not showing up. Let's try to restart the app here. Fade it out again send it and it's not showing up. Why? Mm, an action is missing here. So I found out what was missing. We were missing the call for our submit form function. It's obvious. So we came to our button here in that function that I created and does nothing. We will call the view model as follows. If the form is valid, it will show the submit form, otherwise it will not show anything. Is that a bit redundant? Yes, it is. But if you feel like it, you can remove it. Okay. Now, if we submit it, it's showing. Wonderful. What's missing here? It's showing this email and checkbox values in this field. So what am I going to do? I'm going to call viewmodel.email and here in in accepted terms, I'm going to call viewmodel.accepted terms. Save. It's already showing. So now if I deselect it, the accepted terms becomes false. And if you type something here, it updates as well. For example, at hevelo.com. So that concludes our first part of this tutorial. And now comes the cool part. I'm going to show you what we solved in Revelo. I want to show you a library that will make all of this simpler. I don't know if you noticed, but we have a series of pieces of code here that are repeated. So for example, we need two variables for each field, which is the value of the variable plus the error. We need to check if the form is valid. And here we have a problem in our code because we do this verification in two different places, both here and is empty and, and is not empty. and the accepted terms here too and we need two functions to update the fields and validate 
Imagine a form that has 10 fields, how extensive this class will be. So let's start refactoring this from here and add a nice tool to the game called Flutter Format. So I just suggest that you come here in your dependencies and add Flutter Formax in version 2.1.0, latest one. I'm gonna save and we're going to go back to our page and our view model. Let's go. And I'm gonna show you how simple it is to make this refactoring with Formax. Firstly, you need to add the Formax here as a mixing inside your view model. You will notice that it already has a few here called is form valid. So we can delete this one safely. But let me take a step back. When we are initializing our page, we need to call Formax to let it know which fields we want to build. And this, we can do it right now. So after creating the view model, I'll call it below. View model dot on view ready and let's create this function this is just for us to tell the view model that our page is ready to be built so I'm going to create a function here called on view ready when it is called what we need to do is initialize the formats and how do we do that set up form a very simple function to implement just before continuing, I want to remind you that for us to set up the Formax, we need to say what will be the key type for us to identify each field. We can do it with string, we can do it with integers, with enums, whatever suits you best. And this key is going to be placed right here. As you can see, it expects a map from string to Formax field. So I'm going to create a string map. So in this case, we will have two fields one with the email which will be a formax field a formax field that will be initialized with an empty value as we're doing here so it's the same and with validators and this one is a really cool part of formax you can separate your classes dependencies and responsibilities very well we have already prepared the formax validator called required field validator it, it already comes with the library you can use it here i'm just gonna copy and paste this little piece of text that we're gonna use in it and the email is already ready in our view model but the checkbox is still missing so let's do the checkbox here Accept the terms and it will be our next formx field which will receive a false value so if you take a look at it this here is already telling him that it is a boolean and we will handle the validator right away for now hold on to this information we'll go on with this soon so what do we have to change on your page Firstly, you won't need any more of these variables. None of them will be necessary because you will be doing all this through Formax itself, let alone needing each of these methods. So look how simple your code is now. Let's see on the page how this works. I'm just gonna save it here so I can make the changes. So the first thing we have to change here is our error. For us to do that, look what we have now. Formax already provides us with these two functions, get fuel value and get fuel error message. So calling get fuel error message and passing the email, it will already know exactly which field it has to get the error from. Likewise, here at OnChanged, we already have a Formax function called update and validate field there's another one here too but i won't go into details not now and this update and validate field we're gonna pass the value just making a change here as now the function signature is different we need to do it this way 
as we're gonna need to pass both the value and the name of the field that we're changing. So I had to make this small change. And likewise, we will have to do the same thing with the accepted terms. We're gonna get it the same way, get field value. In this case, we're gonna get the same name as here, accepted terms. And when the value is updated, you already know, I'm gonna call update and validate field. Make the same change here that we did just now. So it will be the value. So whether the person accepted it or not. And the name of the field, which in this case is accepted terms. Good. And now for the error part. So the error here, we will update in the same way. So get fuel error message from accepted terms. If it is different from null here, everything is fine. And here we will get the actual error value to be able to show it in the interface. So accept the terms. We're almost done. The email, remember that here we deleted this variable. Now the way we access it is get field value, passing the email. And in the same way, let's copy and paste this here to make our life easier get field value passing accepted terms. Cool. Let's save it. So when we added the library, our build runner watch has stopped running. So I have to run it again and run our application. Let's wait for it to generate the files. And as soon as it generates, we'll run the application again. Okay, already executed, running the application here again. Good. So as you can notice, the button is still disabled. Let's say something here in our email. Mm, it's already working. That is from valid that we deleted here and from X is already providing it for us. But an important part is missing. This field here is not being validated. Remember I told you that we were going to solve this part? Well, the time has come. So I'll show you how customizable from X is. In form X, we can make a custom validator. Let's do the following. Checkbox validator dot dart. So we're going to create a class checkbox validator, which extends for Max's validator. And let's open the suggestions and it will tell us which function needs to be filled. The validator, if you look here, it's a generic type. So it expects to receive a type so it knows what it's validating. So in this case here, it knows that our type is a Boolean type, which is also nullable. And then here in the validate function, it's very simple. What we basically need to do is check if the value is false or true. So here we can return the following. If the value is null, We already know that the result of this function is that it is not valid, but we cannot simply return false. We have to return a future of validator result. Since it's a future, I'm going to make this code async. And since it's a validator result, we can return it as follows. A new validator result passing is valid false and passing an error message. This field is required. And then here you could use whatever error message you wanted. Otherwise, then here we could have done it as follows. If the value is null or false, in other words, it is not true, then we can return that it is not valid. Otherwise, we can return validator result dot success. 
and everything will be resolved. Here we just indicated a slightly prettier way for us to do it, which is to put the curly braces, it's a pattern, and that's it. So we've already created our validator, we just need to add it here. So in this way, we can instantiate our checkbox validator. If you want to pass an error message here and create your own even more customized class, you can make all kinds of validators you want, which is why Formax is so interesting. Saving the code, if we update the name here, the email, we can type something, for example. Well, guys, after you do that, as the view model instantiates and configures the form in the on view ready that happens only once, we need to run the application again. So I'm gonna press start here, it will start again. If we type in the email, we see that it is valid and the button remains disabled because this field has not been filled in. And if the person unchecks it, validation is already happening. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. Formax makes this whole process of creating forms much easier. I really recommend that you test it and tell us in the comments what you think. That's it for today. Thanks. Bye.